can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Sunshiny day. Now, how many of you know that when Jesus comes into your life, those old dark clouds just kind of disappear, right? Come on, huh? And God puts new life in your life. And that's why I like to say, gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Come on, say that with me. Be a bright, bright, sunshiny day.
sing with me. With her eyes. I love to praise 
situations have come against them, and they need someone to stand with them. And I really think that's what God wants us to do, stand with one another. You know, bikers have a code. It's called a code of respect. It's called a code of unity. And, you know, we have a code that we says a biker don't leave a biker. A biker don't pass a broke down biker on the side of the road without at least stopping and checking it if we can help. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Well, brothers in the church, don't let brothers and sisters in the church. Believer don't stop That's right. Believer doesn't leave. A believer. So if you need a prayer request, you make your way down. How great is our God, how great is our God, how great, how great is our God. Come on, you need prayer, you make your way down right now, alright? Well, how great is our God. Worthy of our praise and my 
just then. How great, let me hear you, is our God. Come on, you bunch of bikers. How great is our God. How great, how great is our God. One more time. Will it Sunday? Because I want you to be able to get out of here and get home and beat the Baptist to, uh, to the, to the uh, Chinese buffet, all right? <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, I want y'all to be there first, okay? Because bikers don't go without food, all right? I mean, I want to feed your spirit. I want to feed your soul. We want to be there first looking at them. So y'all stay in church way too long, all right? But anyway, I got a couple of great people I want you to meet and say hello to. And then I got, I believe today that we're going to have a great message. And God's really going to change your life. So take about a five-minute break. See you in a minute. God bless you, okay? I want you to welcome somebody that's very important to me. He was a friend before he ever got into politicians. So I was in politics. In fact, I never thought he'd make a good politician. <laughs> That didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> huh? But I want you to welcome our present reigning and future again District 81 State Representative Clay Shea Snyder. All right. His wife Phoebe's here. His dad's here. Many of the family's here. But I want him to come and greet you and just share a little bit. You know, we always give people opportunities to come and share. Because I believe it's important that, that they meet them and hear their heart and know that they're part. So come on, Clay. Welcome, my friend. No, I'm, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> you know, four years ago when I, I got elected, I never realized how important this job really was going to be. I got elected to go and to serve all of y'all. Is what I got elected to do. I realized four years ago that our state was headed in a direction that I didn't want it to be. You know, we... we look at things and our natural resources in this state, our oil, our, our sugar cane, our agriculture, and our greatest resources, this young man right here, these young kids that we have, that's our greatest resource that we have. And I realized that I wanted to make a difference in their futures come and be able to help everybody in our district, and be able to help everybody in our state. And, you know, growing up on Bayou Barber, uh, there's a lot of great people standing on this stage in Bayou Barber. I just want y'all to know that. I'm proud of both of them up here. You know, every time, every time I go somewhere and I see them uh, perform and do their things that, that help the community, it, 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 it fills my heart with joy. Uh, Ashton gets to come to the Capitol and, and sing, and uh, I stand out there and I'm, I'm blowing like a, a, a daddy bear out there sometimes. It's just amazing. But the power of a dream that like I say, he called me to do it, but the things that I do in Baton Rouge that a young fellow who was born and raised in French Southern who went there and battled for things in this district and battled for things for each one of us, not big accomplishments, but small accomplishments. The things that we do, the little things, is what makes a difference in the long run. The faith that I have, the faith that y'all have in me. This job is not just about me, it's about all of us. What I've done is about all of us. It's faith, it's family, and
and y'all believing in me as much as I believe in y'all. And I want to thank each and every one of y'all for that. So thank y'all, and I look forward to the future. Thank you. That makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? Huh? Sorry. All right. But more to come. Right. Really, come on. I thank you so much for being here. And you, we have really somebody that's going to blow your socks off and bless you. And give Trust and never doubt He will
the rules in which to live by. There, I mean, he gave him the Ten Commandments. He talked about everything. I mean, he, 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 was, he was setting up the kingdom for these new people. And Moses is up there. And one of the worst enemies to the born again believer, it's the worst enemy to anybody maybe, but one of the enemies that we face is a thing called time. You see, God had Moses on the mountain and he was breathing upon him the things that he needed to teach the children so that when he came down, not only would he have those Ten Commandments that we live by, but he would have some laws and, and he would have some understanding on some ways to do things and how to judge. And the people got a little weary. Now, that reminds me a lot of me. Sometimes I get a little weary waiting on what I believe that God has promised me for all of these years. And I would bet that some of you, maybe a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you jumped into this thing, you gave your heart to Jesus, you got fired up, but it seems like it's been a battle and you've gone from one disappointment to another disappointment. Things are good and things are bad. And, and, and you really are, you're really getting worn out from the journey. And while Moses was up there and God was instructing how he was going to bless the people and treat the people and cause them to prosper, the people are down there with Aaron and they're getting a little bit discouraged. And so they come to Aaron and they say, Aaron, what happened to Moses? I'm going to tell you today, don't be like those children of Israel. Don't get discouraged when you don't hear God speaking every day. You know, it's wonderful when, when I wake up in the morning and I just feel God speaking way down here. Now, I don't want anybody to go home or anybody to tell this thing that, that Pastor T, that God talks to Pastor T every day. I have all my friends say, God told me this, and I said, if God spoke to you that much, you'd be crazy. Oh, wait. <laughs> Maybe you are. I don't know. But you know, God just speaks that to my heart. And I believe in all my heart that some of you are growing weary like the children of Israel. And, and, and they came to Aaron and they said, make for us a God. We need something that we can see. We can see. For too long, the church has been going through life doing well as long as they can see the hand of God moving each and every day. It's easy to serve God when you've got a pillow by fire and a pillow of dust, a cloud of dust and a pillow of fire at night. It's easy to serve God. When I first got saved, man, every morning when I woke up, it seemed like God was right there. There was just a supernatural amount of faith and everything was going good. But listen, there comes a time that God wants you to grow up a little bit. You're going to face a few battles because God's got things for you to do. And while He is trying to mold you and shape you so that you can do those things, you're going to go through a time of training. To get to the second grade, you've got to pass the... So he said, oh, that's why I'm still there, right? <laughs> you got to pass. To get to what God wants to do, listen, there, there's people, there's, there's a lot of people that have great talent, but they don't have dedication. And the reason why God's not using them, and the reason why God can't is because they won't commit themselves, they won't give that talent and be steadfast and sure and committed with it. They like it when the mics come on and the cameras start rolling. But how many of you know serving God is even in the rough times? Even in the times when you don't know what happened to Moses. And Moses is up on the mountain. The people come to Aaron and Aaron says, let's take off some of the adornment that you received. Now wait, God gave them that because he warned them to know that they were blessed. How easily we will trade what God has given us for something that we see. Listen, if I tell you today, and most of you would agree, that if God is for me, now you say that like, do you believe it? Does anybody here believe that? If God is for me, come on, if God is for me, but do you believe it? You say yes, but what about tomorrow morning when things seem to go wrong and you just say, well, if that's the way it's going to be, I'm just going to quit. God ain't nowhere to be found and that's how it's going to be serving God. I just will go back to my bar hopping those smoking whole bunging days. We say, oh, if God, we, we, see, we, sometimes we're stuck in a situation just like these children of Israel. We only believe what we 
see. And they couldn't see Moses. And Aaron says, give me what God has given you. Remember those jewels he gave them? He said, give them to me. I'm going to melt them down. I'm going to make a golden calf. Moses is on the mountain. And God says, Moses, do you hear what I hear? Moses is probably like me. No, Lord, I'm not hard here. And I don't hear anything. He says, I hear the, the, the sound of battle. No, 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 no. I hear the sound of reveling. And Moses goes down and Aaron has made a big golden calf and they're all decided to get together and they're going to worship this golden calf. How easily they traded what God said. I mean, it was easy to follow God when they wake up one morning and frogs had covered the land. It was easy to follow God when locusts had covered the land. It was easy to follow God when you're the only ones living that had the blood up on the doorpost. It's easy to say how awesome and magnet, magnificent is God when the Red Sea splits and you walk through on dry ground. But when things slow down a little bit, they begin to get discouraged. Well, I kind of want to start reading a little bit. And in Exodus chapter 33, I, I, I like what God said to Moses. He said, say to the children, because see, when they came down, God was pretty upset. In fact, he looked at Moses and he said, hey, well, let me just read what it says so you don't think I'm being judgmental. Say to the children of Israel, you are stiff-necked people. I can come up, ooh, oh Lord. I can come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore, he told me, he said, what you have on that you didn't already give up, you can take it off. Take off your ornaments. And God went on to say, I'm not going to bless him anymore. Go home and read this. In Exodus chapter 2, God said, I'm through with it. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to wipe them out. And Moses said, God, God, don't do that. God, don't do that. Lord, if, if, if you're going to block them out, then block me out also. Lord, if you're going to destroy them, then destroy me also. And it said that God said, I'm not destroying them. And then God went on to tell Moses, and you can read it because I know I'm out of time. He said, I, I am going to go with them. My presence is going to be with them. In the, in the latter part, he says, I know them by name. That's what God's telling Moses. He said, listen, I know the children of Israel by name. How many of you ever read in Isaiah where it says the Lord has carved our name in the palm of His hand? You ever read that? That God has your name engraved in the palm of His hand. He, you are ever before God. How easily we get discouraged and think that God has left us because we go through battles and situations. But hear what God told the children of Israel and He told us again later on that you are ever before me and there engraved in the palm of my hand is your name. He told Moses, He said, not only is, is their name ever before me, but my grace is ever before them. And then He said, go and tell them Go and tell them to get ready because I'm going to do something that God... And Moses looked at God and he said, God, I understand that you said you're fixing to take them into a new land. I understand you said that you're fixing to bless the children of Israel in spite of their failure, in spite of their quick turning away. Thank God for Moses who stood there and said, Lord, don't destroy them. Don't destroy them. Don't destroy them. You know, and that's what I like so much about about what some of you do. Because see, you're, you're what I call interceding. Standing in the gap. If it wouldn't be for you, I don't know what God would do with some people. But we pray and we pray. And that's why I take so serious the Facebook page of, 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 of prayer requests. Because when those prayer requests come in there, some of them are sick and some of them are not. But every one of them is so important because I believe God is looking 
looking for a group of people to stand in the gap for those that may otherwise be destroyed. This morning my phone rang and it was, a, it was a club brother that called me and he's going through a terrible sickness right now. And he was going to be here today but, but he woke up this morning in excruciating pain and he just couldn't get up and come. But you know what I was glad to tell him? That today we're going to pray for him and today we're going to believe God to touch him and that next month he'll be here with us. Do you believe that with me? Amen. But, but let's move on. I know I'm in a hurry and I need to get through. God looks at Moses and he said, Moses, I'm fixing a blessing. I, I'm so, I, I, I don't want to say he said I'm sorry. But I'm just going to say he said, Lord, he said, Moses, I'm not going to destroy him. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to bless him. Go down there and tell him. I'm going to bless him. And Moses looked at God, and this is the whole point of the message. Moses looked at God and said, God, before I go down there, before I move on, See, Moses was smarter than me. Moses wanted to set at rest some things that were going on. You see, when he was seeing the presence of God, it was easy. But things had changed. And Moses is there, and he says, God, I want to see your glory. I want to know that you're with me. If we're going to be, and I know some of you are saying, I could do it, Pastor T, if I knew that God was with me. If I could just wake up in the morning and see God with me, I know that I could do what God's called me to do. But I want you to leave here today being changed. And God told Moses, said, Moses, you go down there. Moses said, I'm not going. I'm not going. Leave us right here. Leave us right here if we can't know that your presence is with us. Lord, if we can't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when we leave out of here that you're going with us, Lord, leave us right here. I'd just rather stay right here and die right here. Now, I want to kind of paraphrase that. Many of you are here, and, and I know that you're like me. I don't want to leave out of this barn this morning if I know God isn't going with me. Can you say amen? amen. You know, I got battles in my life that I need to overcome. I got situations in my life that I need power. And Lord, I don't want to leave this building today. I don't want to make another step outside of there if I don't know that you are with me. And then God said this. Moses, I'm going to do what you've asked for. But God put some stipulations on it. God said, Moses, I'm going to set you. You're going to tell the people tomorrow to get ready. And I'm going to pass by you. But I'm going to put you, Moses, in the cleft of the rock. How many of you know the cleft of the rock represents Jesus? Huh? Oh, Jesus. And I believe that God was saying, I'm going to put you in Christ. That's where he put us, in the cleft of the rock. The rock of Jesus. And he said, I'm going to come passing by. And I'm going to pass by in all of my glory and all of my power. You're going to see all of the wonder and the grace and the magnificence of God. And he said, the only thing I want to tell you when I come through, I'm going to cover your eyes. And sure enough, when God came through that day, God passed in His glory and His honor, His power, His magnificence. I mean, everything that was God passed before Moses. But Moses couldn't see it because God had His hand over his eyes. And it says that when God had passed, He removed His hand and He could see His glory from the backside. The results of His glory. Now, some of you had caught on yet. What are you saying, Pastor T? Why did God cover Moses' eyes? Well, you say, well, no man can see God. At least he died. He's so awesome. He's so wonderful. Okay, I buy that. And you're right. He's holy. But I believe one of the reasons God covered His eyes is for us today. Those that came on a Harley, those that came on a Tribe, those that came on a Goldwing or a Yamaha, 
or that came by car because God wanted us to know that He is with us. He is with us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days. But what He wants us to feel is His presence. He wants us to know. He wants us to be able to sense the presence of God with us. It's easy to serve God. When everything is going right. When we see the angels going before us, widening and opening the doors. It's easy to serve God when you're on the mission field and, and you need the miraculous to happen and the happening is just happening like that. It's easy to serve God when you come up to your battle and the battle just dissipates. And God's done that for me. Has He done it for you? Yes. But sometimes we've got to go through the battle. And what I want you to get is God has not left you because you don't see Him. We want to learn to feel Him. See, some of you have been battling and battling and battling. And it started out good. Man, you started out so good. You were seeing God. God was like doing these amazing things in your family, in your home, in your life, and on the job. And then you started getting... I like what Jesus told Thomas. He said, Lord, blessed are those... He said, Thomas, blessed are those who have seen. He said, but blessed are those who have believed and not seen. See, blessed are those that will follow Him because they feel Him. I, I want to be like Moses today. I want to leave and I want to walk outside that door and recognize that the only reason that I made it through my life this far is the hand of God was upon my life. Herb, the only reason you're here today playing the guitar is not that you're that great, brother. It's not that God couldn't find another guitar player. But the fact is, God isn't finished with you yet. And though the angels weren't there to stop you at the virtue, God was there to bring you through it. See, I'm going to leave here today, and I want to leave here knowing I'm going to be able to feel God. I want to be like Moses. I want to know His power and His presence, not because I've seen it acted out. I want to know His power and His presence because I feel it in my heart. I sense it in my spirit. Whatever you're battling, when you know that God is there and that God is for you, when you know it, but not because you're seeing it, but because you know it in your heart, you've heard God speak that to you in your soul. When you're going and you're doing the ministry, not because it's popular, but because you know that's what God has birthed in you. You know that's the grammar word of God, if you will. You know that that's what He's speaking. And you hear it. And you hear it in your heart of hearts. You believe it. The addiction that you're fighting. Listen, God said He would set you free. Some of you, for a while, God helped you. He kept those people away from you. Your old friends of the past. He kept the drug pusher away from you. He kept you out of situations that, that, were, that you had no power over. That was an opportunity for you to get power in Him. But now today, He wants you to overcome it because you know that greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. He wants you to, to feel His presence. I don't know. Maybe I'm not making sense today. Maybe I should have worn my glasses. See, I believe God's going to do what He said He's going to do. We preach the message called Think Big. Some of you left out of here thinking big. Then you went back to being victims of stinking thinking. I just don't see God working in my life no more, Pastor T. I move by what I'm feeling God speaking to my spirit. I know God is there because I've been in that spot where He comes through and He just covers and I, no, I haven't seen God. I'm sorry. 
And I'll be honest with you, I don't see God every day. I don't see Him move mountains. I don't see Him separate the water. I don't see miracles every day. It's easy to serve God when I'm seeing all that. It really is. Man, it's so easy. It's so easy. When I go into work in the morning, everybody just falls out in the spirit. And I walk in there and <laughs> everything is wonderful. You know what I'm saying? But some days, I walk into my office and I feel like jumping out. I want, I want to be able to serve God as I feel God's presence leading me. And when I get it in my spirit, I know that I'm going to overcome. Forget what I see with my eyes. I want to walk by faith, not sight. I think God's calling us today to walk by faith, knowing what He said more than what we see. Let me make this simple. I've been praying for my daughter. I've been praying for my son, for Pastor T, and it's getting worse. I just give up on him. I don't know what to do. Listen, stop going and telling me what you see. Telling me what God said. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Oh, Pastor T, I've got my report back from the doctor and he said it's worse than it was before. I guess I need to go make my funeral arrangements. Stop telling me what you see and tell me what you feel. I'm not walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to get that faith inside of me from being able to feel the presence of God. And He is everywhere. He said, I'm going to be with them. You tell them I'm going to be with them. i got their name craved, carved in the palm of my hand. And everywhere I go, I see them. They are ever there before me. My grace is going to be with them. But He taught Moses the most important lesson to go down there and tell them to forget what you see. Forget that you don't see Moses walking around the camp every day. Yes, he's on the mountain and Moses might be dead. Why don't you get plugged into what the Spirit of God is saying on the inside of your life? Is God saying that you need to make your funeral arrangements? Is God saying that your family's going to go to hell? Is God saying that you're going to be addicted to that to the day that you die? Stop believing what you see. And believe. Believe, feel the presence of Almighty God. He came down that mountain. He walked out through those people. And he had such a glow upon his face that the people couldn't even look at him. They had to put, he had to put a veil over his face. And I want you to leave here today. And I want you to be a glow. From not from seeing God. Not from seeing God physically or seeing anything physically. Because you allow God to speak it inside of your heart and your spirit. Because when you leave here, you're not going to take me with you. Some of you say, Amen. My wife, she is. Now some of you said, bless her Lord. <laughs> I mean, tomorrow we're not going to be gathered like this. You're going to be all by yourself. And the battle is going to hit you head on, face to face. That disease, that diagnosis, that report, that child. But listen, what are we going to do? We're going to believe what God said. We're not going to be moved by what we see. We're not going to be moved because we see God doing everything right. I know that God is doing everything right because I feel it in my heart of hearts. And I know that He said that I'm never before Him. His grace is there for me. But God went on and He looked at Him and He said, Now Moses, I'm going to make a new covenant before them. I am, oh, are you ready? Behold, I make a new covenant before all your people. I will do marvels as have not been seen. God said, I'm fixing to do so many great things you can't even imagine. You think that what I did bringing you out of here was great? You get ready because of what I'm going to do. 
He said, listen, not only that, I want you, I'm going to do an awesome thing. I'm going to do amazing things. I'm going to do with you. Observe what I have commanded you this day. And he said, not only this, he said, I'm going home. No, he said, I'm going out before you. And I am going to drive out your enemies before you. He said, tomorrow when I come down, he said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to amaze you. I'm going to touch your life. I'm going to do a new thing in you. I'm going to go out before the Hittites, the Hitt all of those that come against you. And I am going to drive them out of the land. I am going to. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? Yes. And I believe that's what God's going to do to us today. Now, it's a simple message. But I wanted you to go home. Go home, read Exodus 32, 33, all of it. Go on and read it. But I want you to leave here today, and I don't want you coming back defeated. You say, well, I guess I won't be coming back. No, I didn't say you couldn't come back defeated. I said, I just don't want you coming back defeated. This is like a hospital. We open up on the third Sunday of every month for you to come here, and we want to speak into your life. But I'm ready for you to leave out of here and things be different. I'm ready for you to leave out of here and forget what you see with your eyes. Too many of you focused on seeing what God can do. I want to know what God can do and feel what God can do. I want to leave here today knowing that, first of all, that God's going before me. That my name is engraved in the palm of His hand. His grace is for me. And no, I, I may not see. But I'm going to feel. But see, my eyes have deceived me a few times in the past. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you have some of you taken some things over the years that made you see things wasn't even there. Today I'm going to leave you changed. Not because I've seen God, but because I felt God. Bow your heads with me. I close. How many of you here just be honest? Say, Pastor T. I've been going through some battles in my life and, and, and you're right, it kind of seems like it's gotten harder. And there was a time in my life, Pastor T, when everything seemed to go so much better. And I saw God moving. And I recognized that they, Pastor T, that, that, that I need to feel God in my heart. I need to feel God in my life. And it's not about what I see with my eyes, but it's what I see with the eyes of my heart. And I want God to pass by today, and I want to feel His presence in my life. And I want to feel God saying that it's going to be all right. Deep down in my spirit, I want the Lord to speak to me and bring me through today and into tomorrow, knowing and feeling Him saying that it's all right. There are some of you today that would say, Pastor T, I don't know the Lord is my Savior. I need to accept Him into my life as Lord and Savior. Some of you would say today, Pastor T, I need to get my life straight before God. My life's been a mess. And, and, and I know Him, and I, and I know that I'm His child, but to be honest with you, I need to just, I just need to start all over. this day is for you. I want us to pray together. Why don't we just say, Father, in Jesus' name, I confess to you this very day that I need you to come into my heart, to come into my life, to forgive me 
of all my sins to cleanse me of my failures, my shortcomings. And Lord, I want to know you. I want to feel you. I want to feel you in my heart. I want to feel you in my life. And when I leave here today, I want you to go with me. And I will never ever be the same again. And I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Now look at me. We still got people coming in. <laughs> That's pretty good. I guess we'll just start all over. <laughs> Not really. Huh? But look, this is what I'm looking for. Because we're going to close it out. And we're going home. Alright? And, you know, again, I didn't have this, this, this well-planned thing. I just had something that's on my heart. Because you know what? It's easy to serve God when you see everything. But I want to learn to serve God because I know what He's spoken to my heart. I've learned something about people. When their heart is in it, they don't stop. I mean, we've had people that have joined in the wind and got all involved in church in the wind. And man, they run fast and run hard. And but, you know, the minute that they stop seeing things happen the way that they think it should happen, they disappear. I might be little them. I love them with all my heart. But then there are those that when everything's going wrong, they're right there looking at you saying, Pastor T, let's just keep on going. It's going to be all right. And you know what I learned? That the difference between one is they see with their eyes and the other sees with their heart. I mean, some people, there's people in my family don't at all believe in what I'm doing. All right? I mean, they think I am absolutely off my rocker. I mean, my mama fortunately doesn't anymore. But when I told her what I was going to do, she went, huh? Really? Are you absolutely crazy? I mean, when I first started telling people what I was going to do, they all looked at me, well, he's crazy. But you see, it's not because everything goes good, because I'll be honest with you. I added it up this week. It takes 70 man hours get us to this point right here. 70 hours. 70 man hours to get to this point right here. It takes another 70 to get it all back in the trailer and get it all out of here. And sometimes, that's like we had 15, 16 people here. Man, we knocked it out right quick. It was so simple. But sometimes, they put a couple of us. And, and, and in those times when I look out there and there ain't nobody here, you know, it kind of makes me mad. And you know what? When, when I look at it with my eyes and see what I see, it gets discouraged. But I'm not doing it because of what I see here. I'm doing it because of what I see here. And then on Sunday mornings when I hear those bikes rolling in here and we always have 100 or 150 people show up here, sometimes 300 people, I, I'm just, I say, Lord, I'm so glad I ain't doing it because I see it. I'm so glad I'm doing it because I feel it. Amen? And listen, I want you to leave here today because you can't imagine the blessings that God has for you. He has jobs for you. He has promotion for you. He has favor for you. He has ministry for you. But you got to settle it. I'm going to keep on keeping on whether anybody else goes on or not. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to beat this addiction. I promise you I'm going to beat this addiction because God is in me and I felt it that Sunday at Church in the Wind and I know if I don't make it today, I'm going to make it tomorrow, but I'm not going to be what I was yesterday anymore. I believe it. I believe it. You're sick in your body? Let me tell you something. The Bible says that God's a healer. I'm not a healer. I believe in healing and I pray for healing, but I'm not a healer. I can't twitch my nose, wave my hand, and make anything go away. But I know a God that can. I can't restore families. I've done my best. I've counseled people and things got worse. 
I mean, I'd go to have the best counsel I had, and things got worse. And I've learned the greatest counselor is him. I think that's why they said that his name shall be wonderful, counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. So I'm looking for people today that will say, Pastor T, I'm leaving. And, but as I leave, I want to sense God. I want God's presence to, to lead me as I ride out of here today. Situation in my family may be terrible, but I know God has got my name in the palm of His hand, and I know what I felt in that service, and I don't care what I see, I don't care what people say, I know what God said. That's what I'm looking for. You want to be free from that addiction? You want to see your family put together? You want to see God bless your finances? I'm going to tell you something. God said I'm going to do what? An awesome thing. I'm fixing to do a thing. It's no small thing. That's what he told his children. Moses, go tell them that when I come down, it's all going to change. And I'm going to look at you and tell you, when you leave here, it's all going to change. You hear me? You hear me about it? I believe that when you leave here today, brother, that things are going to change. I believe when you leave here, Alan. I believe here, Paul. When you leave out here today, things are going to change, brother. Not because Pastor T. You don't see Pastor T for a year. Because God. Are you ready? I'm going to say a prayer, but it's up to you. How many of you say, Pastor T, I want to experience that today. I just want the presence of the Lord to give me strength before we leave out of here. I'm going to count for three when I say three. Those of you that want it, I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing. We're going to say goodbye. Are you ready? One. Two. Now's the time. Come on. Three. Stand up and I'm going to pray. Will it so day? Brother, huh? And you know, he's been through some battles. He just got here. He's been through some serious battles in his life. And he, need, he needs this moment. He needs to feel God and know that, that God's going to go before him. He hadn't even heard the message. But he came in and sensed, I believe, the presence of God, knowing that this is for him. Amen? So as I pray for him, I'm going to pray for you also. Come on, lift your hands. If you feel comfortable doing that, it's okay. I just do that as a symbol of the Lord is me. And I pray for you and I pray for him. Lord, Father of all these wonderful people, Lord. Lord, many of them have asked you to come in and cleanse them in a new way in their life and in their home. And Father, we've made mistakes and we failed you so many times. But God, I know this. You haven't given up on us. Lord, you haven't given up on our family. You haven't given up on our job. Our finances. Lord, you haven't given up on our health, Lord. You haven't given up on what you called us to do. And so, Father, we are leaving here today. Being empowered by the hand and the power of God. Lord, upon these that are in this congregation, may your spirit just rest upon as you pass by Moses that day and you felt and he seen and he can feel the glory. He can feel your power in your ear in this building and they're feeling just that power. And they're
said, I want you to give it to this person. So, in the presence of all of you, this bike ain't from me. This bike is from the Lord. And so, I want to say, when you get something from God, it, you need to treat it with excellence. Clean it, wash it, ride it. <laughs> Alright? You know what I'm saying? But, let's look at it. Are you ready? When I count to three, y'all jerk all that off of it, okay? You got to jerk more than one. Get over there, Donald. We got to talk kind of jacks on. Two. One, two, three. Look at that. And listen, I, today we give the great ghost this bike right here. Huh? Pay it for it. He just got an insurance. So the old gray ghost can ride again. Alright? Now listen, I didn't give him this bike. God moved upon a person's heart and life. See, already getting favor. Huh? Huh? Already getting favor. Because he didn't have a bike to ride, and this brother said, Pastor T, has been on my heart a while, and I want to donate this bike to End the Wind to give to him. And so it never did End the Wind never did anything. This brother just followed what God told him to do. And so, come on up here, Grey Ghost. Get on that motorcycle. They're going to take a picture of it. It's yours. Huh? Give the Grey Ghost a big, big hand. And the person that did it said they don't really want to know, anybody to know that they did it. So, I'm going to honor their wish. That way, if they give away something, maybe I'll get it next time. No, I'll pick it. Amen. Come on. Give it right. 